Hi there and welcome to the Middle Ages, dear friends of Crusader Kings. This is Immanuel Khan. I want to explain to you how we'll do uh, the Holy Fury Let's Role Play on Hard. Because sometimes we will take decisions that are not at all rational or that, or that don't follow a certain goal. They will maybe rather follow these things, the traits, and they will also follow the attributes. I'll give you a rough overview how that is done and then I'll open up a specific uh, possibility how you will influence the world if you want so. So that influence you have lies in the children of this world. The children of this world, as you know, will get a childhood focus. Every child you name can get a childhood focus. And you can send me a uh, name that should be like whatever we choose is still open so maybe a slavic name or a norse name or an irish irish ish name and i will name that child then after the name you give me but that's not all you will also be able to determine the childhood focus that child gets so give me a kind of focus i'll choose it and that will be the influence you have on the world so if you want so you can give me a lot of rowdy children that will influence the world in a special way because let's say Hraven of Hordeland that we are currently here is not a very good guy but let's say he has a child and someone of you like, will have a list of male and female characters you can each of you can send me a male and female character plus a childhood focus one until that dies and then the next and so on and uh, then he'll have a child and that child might become heir and that child might be rowdy or it might be playful or might be something so it determines the starting attributes and uh, so in that way you can steer the course of the game because this game will be steered by the persons not by an overlying plan that we want to convert everything to pagan germanic or that we want to take over england and we'll do everything to do that it will be determined by the persons so um, they have these attributes and the attributes are their competence in that in a certain area so if they have a good competence for example in martial then he has a passable competence in martial you would probably use if he has some kind of claim he would probably use martial options to pursue that claim if he wants so and how will we determine what he wants mostly probably through either his claims or his culture or his religion or through the emotional states and the, the lower the attributes are the higher the influence of the emotional states will be on the behavior and the plans of the characters that we play so if we have someone who is gluttonous he, there will be decisions where he could eat something or eat nothing or where he could maybe hold a great blot because he wants to have a party i mean a blot is not only a party but he will maybe hold that to be able to pursue his gluttony because there's a lot to be eaten on on a religious feast and because he's gluttonous he will support that he's also wroth so he might react to something extremely so if someone is there and has an intrigue against him and he incarcerates him he might go and if that guy has extremely pissed him off he might execute him just for no reason and he'll even risk a little bit of tyranny for it so that's how we play that and that's why it's also important um why you give the children the childhood focus and additionally for the children we will have high priority messages on for them so we can always see on the sidebar how and the children we named will be doing and what they will be doing i think that will be very interesting too so you've heard it we will not have an overlaying campaign that is determined by i don't know <laughs> the gods of the game we will have campaigns and ambitions that are, will be typical for the faith the culture and the person that is played by us like that we play the person that we play will determine that like that guy for example he has no wife so 
it is usual he would take a wife and maybe some concubines. And uh, how will he do that? I mean, he's content. He'll probably take a wife and be content with it then. <laughs> that could very well be. He might also choose some kind of god. I mean, you cannot choose a god here. But you could say, like, he... Maybe he's good at Marshall. He understands how Marshall works on a basic level. So we would, he would rather be someone who follows Odin. And then we can, can think about it and say, hey, what would be something that would honor Odin? Even more so if, if he's a religious fanatic. He is, though, a fortune builder. So he would maybe be inclined like to take opportunities, take claims with Marshall. So he would take his army to acquire a territory. And he would also use his stewardship because he's a fortune builder uh, to build a good economy in his realm. He's also trusting, so he would maybe go and trust people a little bit more, even if they are not uh, on his best side. And he's content, so he, would, he wouldn't be over-ambitious. Like he, he wouldn't like to become uh, the king of Sweden or something like that. So he'd rather go and choose something that is not that ambitious, but that could be martial. Like if he's so good at martial, or he would be something who goes for a stewardship focus, if he's inclined to do that, because he's a fortune builder, and uh, yeah, he's he's content. He could maybe go for business, because that's just like doing a bit, and a little bit of luxury, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but not going for the hard thing, which is rulership. Uh, the same goes for this marshal. He, he, he would probably not go for war outright, because he's content. Maybe go for hunting because that's fun for him and he's content. He's a little bit of a wrath, okay, but so there's that that could lead him to war because he can duel people then. Maybe maybe he he wants to duel someone because he's a wrath. And then he would focus on war because that is connected to all of that in the game. And that I mean let's let's for example, take here war because he's a wrath and all that, and is a little bit competent in martial. And then, what kind of ambition would he would he become? It would be unlikely to become a paragon of virtue. That's not in his character or something. Because he's patient. I mean, con content, not patient. Maybe that would probably be become a paragon of virtue. He's also gluttonous and a wrath, so that would stand against that. Would he become a king of Norway? No, he's he's not really ambitious enough for, for something like that, something big. See the realm prosper, that could be something he would go for. Groom and heir, that would be something that would be influenced by, of course, his, his faith and his culture. It's normal to have sons and daughters and to have them uh, get what you had when you die. And so we would probably go for that because he's nothing... Uh, really special in that way and he's also got a higher fertility as a fortune builder so that is a hint he would maybe go into that direction too with the same argumentation you could also say he would would have gone into business maybe and then uh, see the realm prosper that would also be something but as he has no wife and no heir he would probably go for that first and take a wife and so on Later on, when he has fulfilled that, he might go for other things like that. Business and seeing the realm prosper, something like that. But be before that, he's a young, he's a young, uh, younger guy still, and he's maybe ruled a little bit by his wrath. Not that old and cold <laughs> again, and he might want to duel someone who, whom he really hates. So, uh, let's see, he's, he's got no rivals yet, but if he gets a rival, he, he might want to duel him. So that's how we'll play. It might be that we come under the rule of a bigger realm. That is also not bad. We'll try to uh, roleplay then in the bigger realm and we'll follow or try to overthrow that rule, determining, uh, determined by our character. 
So that's all I wanted to say about the roleplay and about the big influence you will have on our heirs. So <laughs> make use of that. I'll give you in a slide the, the email where you can send one character, male or female, and the childhood focus you would like to have. When that character dies, you can choose a new one. So happy <laughs> that you've been here. I'm really looking forward to the Let's Roleplay. Have a great time until then and happy gaming. Let's do this together. It will be fun. It will be a fun, fun journey. <laughs>